So we've been looking at nucleophilic additions to carbonyl compounds uh, since early in the class. We're used to seeing nucleophiles add to the carbonyl carbon. And recently we've seen that we can use carbon nucleophiles, such as an enolate, so that we can form carbon-carbon bonds. We also are used to seeing things like Grignard reagents, and here we see a Grignard reagent. And we taught you that Grignard reagents attack at the carbonyl car carbon to form, uh, in the case of Grignard with a ketone, a tertiary alcohol. We see that here. But look at this. We get a significant amount of another reaction where a methyl group has added to the beta position on these alpha-beta unsaturated compounds. And in fact, if we use a different organometallic reagent, such as a dimethyl cuprate salt, we don't get any of the addition to the carbonyl carbon. Although we get low yields, all of the methyl group finds itself on the beta carbon. And if we take a Grignard and we throw in a couple of other metals, uh, we actually can steer the carbon ion to react solely at the beta carbon in almost quantitative yields. So what's going on with this regioselectivity? Let's take a little look. We're used to drawing resonance structures. We, in fact, explain the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon by saying that this resonance contributor, although it doesn't contribute a lot, it contributes a little bit, and the carbonyl carbon has this positive charge on it. When we have an unsaturation next to it, we can... Uh, draw another resonance structure, which puts that positive charge on the beta carbon. So in fact, when we take a look at uh, the electrostatic potential of an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, we see that we have electrophilic reactivity at both the carbonyl carbon and the beta carbon. So we might expect that we can add nucleophiles to either. And as we're going to see, as it turns out, uh, where the nucleophiles add depends on what they are. So if we take something like methylamine, it'll add to the beta carbon. Uh, when it adds to the beta carbon, we can push our arrows. We can draw a resonance structure for this, which has negative charge on the carbon. And we have our methylamine right so this is an enolate you can imagine this will pick up a proton somewhere depending on our conditions uh, so it's easy for it to pick up a proton and we have an enol and that enol will tautomerize into its keto form so instead of our nucleophile adding to the carbonyl carbon, it ends up on the beta carbon. There's two possibilities for the addition of a nucleophile to an alpha-beta unsaturated system. There's the normal addition where our nucleophile attacks at the carbonyl carbon. That would be this way path, this path on top. After it adds to the carbonyl carbon, the proton adds to the oxygen. We talk about this as being a 1-2 addition. So our proton is in the 1 position, our nucleophile is in the 2 position. We have another type of reactivity where the nucleophile adds at the beta carbon, which is also electrophilic. And the proton still ends up on the hydrogen, if we think about that now, if we wanted to number our carbons again, one, two, three, four, we talk about this as being a one, four addition. The proton is on the one position again, and the nucleophile is on the four position. This can rearrange, tautomerize into the ketone. The net product has the hydrogen on the alpha carbon, and the nucleophile on the beta carbon. And the unsaturation is gone. We now have a carbon-carbon 
single bond. So simple addition is when we add to the carbonyl carbon, and conjugate addition is when we add to the carbon of the conjugated system next to the carbonyl system. And in fact, it adds only at the beta carbon. Strong nucleophiles like Grignard reagents, alkyl lithiums, and metal hydrides favor simple addition or 1-2 addition. As we've already seen, we can also get conjugate addition. So what kind of things like to add conjugately? We'll talk about that. So here's an example of our nucleophile, a carbon-centered nucleophile, a cyanide anion, and it adds preferentially also at the beta carbon. And our final product, uh, going through the enol and then tautomerizing, is a beta cyano ketone in this instance. So a lot of nucleophiles uh, that add to the carbonyl carbon of simple ketones and aldehydes can add to the beta carbon of alpha-beta unsaturated compounds. So let's take a look at uh, another reaction. Here we see if we can take a potential nucleophilic carbonyl compound, if all we have to do is remove one of the protons from one of the alpha carbons, and then we can attack the electrophilic carbon on the alpha-beta unsaturated compound. We're gonna attack at the beta position. There's our new bond. When this all is said and done, we have a 1,5-dicarbonyl compound. So let's take a look at the mechanism. We remove the proton on the alpha carbon, and that gives us an enolate anion. The enolate anion can add to the beta position of an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, and we end up with this thing, which is both a ketone and an enolate. We then simply protonate the enolate. Uh, we may protonate at the hydrogen, or at the carbon, or the oxygen. It's not gonna matter because eventually the equilibrium will be established uh, between the enol and the ketone and usually it will be predominantly in the keto form so that we get this 1,5-diketone, as we've already said. So we have kind of uh, three different reactions. We have an acid-base reaction, which is simply the removal of the alpha proton. We then have a nucleophile adding to electrophile followed by another acid-base reaction. And finally, there may be a tautomerization depending on whether we protonate at the oxygen or at the alpha carbon. Our base is reformed and we only need it in a catalytic amount. So, we can use an enolate as our nucleophile. If we have uh, a carbonyl containing compound that has a proton on the alpha carbon, we can remove that and form the enolate. The enolate then adds to the beta carbon of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And we get the enolate, another enolate, a different enolate as our product that then gets protonated and ends up as this. 1,5-dicarbonyl compound. This reaction's wide in so scope. We talked about it as being 1,2 addition, conjugate addition. It's also known as Michael addition. Michael addition actually works with a number of different kinds of alpha-beta unsaturated systems. What we need is an alkene or even an alkyne with a good electron withdrawing group bonded 
uh, to it. So here we see an alkyne, and we have an electron withdrawing group added attached to it in the form of the carbonyl compound. And we have another compound over here, a 1,3-dicarbonyl compound. Uh, happens to be uh, ethyl acetoacetate. And we can remove these protons because they're quite acidic. Remember the BKA of these is somewhere around 9, easily removed by an ethoxide base, uh, and forms our nucleophile. And that nucleophile will then attack the beta carbon of our alpha beta unsaturated system. Now, in this instance, we keep one in unsaturation and we've lost one of the unsaturations. We can also have a different kind of electron withdrawing group. We can have a cyano group attached to a carbon carbon double bond. That's a good Michael reagent. And we have the same nucleophile. So we would make that anion and just attack the beta carbon. And in this case, we end up with a, our nucleophile adding to the beta carbon of our cyanide, our alpha beta unsaturated nitrile. This reaction even works with enamines as the nucleophile. Uh, as we saw with enamines in other reactions, they're not particularly good nucleophiles, so we do have to heat them up. But we don't have to heat them up a lot. Uh, we can heat them up by refluxing in ethanol. Uh, and we end up getting our iminium cation intermediate that is easily hydrolyzed uh, by the addition of a small amount of water. So here's our nucleophile. This was our electrophile. And that's our new carbon-carbon bond. So we've taken a look at conjugate addition. We've talked about uh, the fact that it's also known as 1,4 addition or Michael addition. We looked at the reactivity of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls. The beta carbon is also electrophilic. Uh, we've talked about 1,4 addition competes with 1,2 addition. Grignards, alkyl lithiums and metal hydrides react primarily in the simple fashion in 1,2 addition, but organocuprates Enolates, enamines, thiols, and cyanide favor 1,4 addition. The product of an etylate and enamine to an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl carbon compound is a 1,5 dicarbonyl compound.